what has happened to the LSU offense to make it look so unprecedentedly good and high-powered for LSU fans? What, what has happened? Walk me through this, Brad. Well, you know, they just changed it completely. Uh, you know, uh, Joe Brady gets a lot of credit for it, the passing game coordinator that came over from the Saints. But he did indeed bring a whole bunch of concepts from New Orleans. Uh, you know, he was an assistant there with Sean Payton. And, um, you know, they start using Clyde edwards Lair a little bit like they use Alvin Kamara. Uh, you know, some of the receiving uh, groupings, the stack groupings, and who they've got in the slot, how they switch everybody up. You know, I was watching the Saints and the Falcons yesterday, and I was going, okay, this looks a little bit familiar. Uh, you know, <laughs> Drew Brees isn't as tall as, tall as Joe Brady. And, uh, you know, Joe's only, I don't know, 75,000 yards behind him in NFL passing. But right. um, you see a lot of the same things. And, when they changed it over, uh, they came over to do sort of a seminar, and Ed Orgeron said he wasn't even in that group, but Steve Emsinger, his offensive coordinator, was, and he said, man, he talked about all this stuff that I think you know we really should think about implementing. And then in spring ball, they started to. They didn't show up much in their spring game, but they had already installed it. And then I saw Joe Brady down at the Manning Passing Academy in, in late June down in Thibodeau, Louisiana, one of the garden spots of the world, but really a fun thing to go to. Um, And I was talking to Joe and his dad and his brother were there. And I said, okay, so I keep hearing about this new offense. And he said, you wait. And I go, really? This this was Burrow? You're not going to recognize it. This This is Joe Burrow. Yeah, he said, you're not going to recognize it. And I said, I'll trust it when I see you do it, Joe. And then I saw him do it uh, against Texas. And then I saw him do it the first time we had him, second time we had him. And and then, uh, you know, Saturday. I'm a believer now, man. It's there to stay. Um, The only problem is they got to find another guy like Joe Burrow to run because – their offensive coordinator said, we could have done this last year. Or No, he said, Joe could have done this last year, but we couldn't, meaning the coaches and the team weren't <laughs> ready for it, but Joe was ready for it. So they got to find another guy like him, and I'm sure they will because Coach Joe will be recruiting his brains out after that win, and I'm sure they'll have a guy that uh, can come in and do the job. Well, the interesting thing is, Brad, is, you know, one thing is I'm watching it. Um, this was the first time I saw it for all four quarters um, and was able to just blow open a hole in, my, in a football weekend to watch a full-on LSU game. Um, right. This offense is no chill, zero chill. And by that I mean it is so high powered and so high pace, high octane, that even when they should be taking the air out of the ball, they don't. And that was one of the most aggressive four-minute drills I've ever seen. And I know that the quick uh, strike that Alabama had in response to LSU going up by two scores uh, right. took, the, took away, if you will, from the attention that would have been paid to the game ceiling drive. But that was one of the most aggressive four-minute offenses I've ever seen. In any game, at any yeah. level, Brad. Yeah, he took it, uh, what, 10-minute mark maybe, 75 yards. I think it was a 12-play drive, but it, like you said, it took four and a half minutes, 426, whatever. And then he turns around, you know, after Tua comes back and hits Judy for the touchdown, and he goes on another 75-minute drive in exactly almost four minutes, just like you said. And it, it, they never took their foot off the gas. Ever. I thought they were starting to just have a little bit of a dent in their armor when Tua just kept coming back and they got back-to-back scores and they cut it down. I thought, is this where they pull it back? And, you know, Gary and I were probably even questioning that on the air. If we didn't do it on the air, we did it to each other during a partial. And I, you know, and we're going, are they going to back it off here? And man, they just kept it down, just kept going. And uh, it's amazing that the two quarterbacks couldn't have been more spectacular, but the two, the two some number 22 running backs, Oh. Those guys made it a show, man. I mean, Najee Harris, Alabama's not even close if he doesn't play lights out in the second half. And the little dude for LSU, man, I just love the kid because, you know, he wasn't a five-star recruit and all that stuff. He's he's 5'8", if he's lucky, if you saw Jamie Erdahl interviewing him after the game. Well, I'm not going to tell you how tall Jamie is, but I know how tall she is. So, I mean, he has got a huge heart, and he's going to be a hell of a NFL player, too, I think. But those two guys put on quite a show, too, not just a quarterback. Yeah, Edwards Elair, he's from Baton Rouge, too. I mean, what a moment right. for him to put that on tape. Because, again, I had Mike Mayock, our buddy, uh, Mike, on last Friday. We had Todd McShay on the day before. I mean, this is the tape McShay said is the first tape he's going to put on when he starts evaluating players for the draft. This is the tape that Mayock is probably already reviewing for the third time since you – and Gary stepped out of the booth. I mean, for him to put that game on that tape at that moment in that stadium, it couldn't be any bigger for a kid from Baton Rouge. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, and 
Yeah, and Mike knows that better than anybody for how many years he was your draft guru. And by the way, his his picks are doing pretty good. Yeah, you think? <laughs> including, including Josh Jacobs. Yeah, I know. I texted him a couple times last week. Um, that's You know, the coaches tell their kids that, too. I mean, they didn't used to say that, I don't think, but both uh, Nick and Coach Orgeron have said that to us. We tell them, and, and, you know, we challenge them. And not just the skill position players, but, you know, the, the offensive linemen, defensive linemen. Hey, the first thing they're going to do is pick the best college game that you played in or the highest octane college game you played in. So you better play your butt off because that's what they're going to look at first. And, and he's 100% right, and that's how they do it. And the coaches these days even tell the kids that. So it's, it's an interesting concept. I would have thought – you know, that that didn't exist, but, man, it does. And that's a motivating factor for all these players. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.